Machines aren't human. They don't have feelings, they don't hold grudges or fall in love like we do. But perhaps the most human thing about them are their intrinsic biases. Believe it or not, researchers say machines can be prejudiced. They just show it in different ways. For example, women may be more likely to be served internet ads for lower paying jobs than men. Or search of a black identifying name might be attached to ads that imply the subject has a criminal record more frequently than a white identifying name. We're tempted to think of technology as neutral. We assume stereotypes and discrimination can't be born from ones and zeros, but technology is only as good as the people who develop it. All humans have biases. That's not always a bad thing. Yeah. They can be a useful decision-making tool. That's why you can type in four words and get a one web page out of a trillion. That's amazing, right? So you don't want to get rid of bias. You want to make sure that you don't go from a stereotype into prejudice to actions. That's Joanna Bryson. She's one of the Princeton University researchers who helped demonstrate that machine learning actually lets artificial intelligence, or AI, pick up on inherent biases in our language. It's already out there with language, with translation. Turkish happens not to have a gendered word for he or she. She puts in, the, in Turkish a sentence that means the doctor ties his shoes, and then she just changes the word doctor to nurse, and it gets translated as the nurse ties her shoes. All that's changed in the Turkish was doctor and nurse, but in the English you get he or she changed by the expectation about who's likely to be a doctor and who's likely to be a nurse. So this has huge implications about how we learn, how we evolve, and how machines are going to evolve. Eileen partnered with Bryson on the study, which was published in Science Magazine. There is explicit bias, also implicit bias, embedded in human language, which is reflected to machines. And this does not have to be just language. This can be, for example, images or speech. Or faces. They're how humans recognize each other. When computers try facial recognition, they sometimes fall short. So my first encounter with algorithmic bias happened when I was an undergraduate uh, studying computer science. I was working on a social robot. So if you're gonna be social, you need to see your partner. Unfortunately, my robot had a hard time detecting me and I found it was a lot easier to borrow my roommate's face. MIT grad student Joy Bualamwini is the founder of the Algorithmic Justice League. She says that she was inspired by her own experiences with discriminatory AI. I was struggling to have my face detected and pulled out a white mask, and the white mask was easier to detect than my face. And so I decided to do a bit more investigation, and I found that the training data that's being used for facial recognition isn't as representative of the variety of human skin tones and facial structures. In other words, many facial recognition systems use the same data sets. If those sets contain mostly white faces, all the products that use that data can inherit those same biases. In 2009, an HP webcam came with facial tracking software, but it couldn't pick up on black faces. HP attributed the issue to contrast recognition in certain lighting. Eight years later, FaceApp lightens dark skin when the hot filter is applied. FaceApp apologized, telling The Guardian that it is an unfortunate side effect of the training set bias. Algorithmic bias can also lead to discriminatory practices because artificial intelligence is now increasingly used for high stakes decision making. So whether or not you get a loan or insurance or if you get a particular job opportunity, algorithms are being used to make these decisions and even how long somebody might spend in prison. When tech has a role in making life altering decisions, you might be wondering why it's being sold to the masses before it's really ready. Oftentimes, ethics play catch up when it comes to innovation. But should we wait for that perfect AI? I guess we need to change how we think about technology because artificial intelligence will probably become perfect when humans are perfectly unbiased. And I'm not sure if that will ever happen. Given that we have to deal with this right now, we have to change the way that we are interacting with technology to make sure that it's fair to everyone. It's hard for a lot of us to notice bias in places where it doesn't personally affect us. That's why researchers say it is crucial to get people from different backgrounds into the coder's chair. When you have a more diverse group of people making AI, it becomes easier to check for some of these blind spots, who codes matters, as well as how we're coding, and ultimately why we're coding. Are we making inclusive technology? 